Hello everyone, today I wanted to do some more gameplay commentary together. First of all, I just want to mention quickly where I've been, why I haven't really been making videos. I got the virus and I got it pretty bad. I've been in bed for about three weeks, really unable to move or do much of anything, but I'm finally getting a bit better to the point where I can sit up and play some video games to pass the time. So I decided to give a season four Elisa a try and I think I managed to get enough decent match footage that we can try and make a video together. But enough about that. Let's have a look at these matches. You can see I'm playing Leroy, which is always difficult. Still a very strong character. Get him with the EX dive kick right there. And you can really tell, um, I didn't mention this enough in my preview videos, but that combo ender I did right there, the back one, two, four, uh, the character really has suffered because of the damage nerf to the final hit there. She uses it in a lot of combos. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big nerf to the character. Overall, I have to say she's uh, quite a bit weaker in this season, which is sad because I'm one of those people who didn't really think she was that strong to begin with. He finishes the string. I punish. So that's nice. Uh, good break on the one plus two. And here you can tell the wall is going to be at a bad angle, so I can't really combo, so I have to drop the final hit. Kind of underwhelming with punish with the standing four right there, but I managed to get him uh, for wake ups with the moon glide too. And you see that time he actually hit confirms the string uh, like he should and doesn't uh, finish it so that I can't punish. Managed to duck a down 3-2, one of the best lows in the game easily. He does a, a spring kick for getups, which I uh, managed to convert to the wall right here. And then the EX for the uh, wall spot right there. So at least in the final round, I felt like I managed to play a little bit of Elisa. I've gotten so much worse with this character because I haven't used her in a long time. And I can really feel the rust. And you know, I'm kind of tired in a, in a shitty physical state right now. So maybe I can use that um, as an excuse for some of these mistakes as well. Here's Brian. It's another character that I famously dislike playing against. You know that about me. Uh, he's going to swing into that string, and when they do, uh, it's always free damage for Elisa. You always need to be careful about how you deal with that um, string right there. And then I did a slash kick for Oki, which worked out. Stepped at the beginning of that run, which worked, but the tracking on the second hit of uh, Brian's string uh, still caught me. And now I'm in the corner, and I won out. You can tell every time I'm doing a Bloody Claw, which is the 442, I'm holding back to make sure that my character doesn't fall asleep. So I can run in and, you know, do follow-ups. Should be able to get the double wall here. That was a pretty cool combo. I was probably smiling when that happened. There's a taunt jet upper right there. Don't really know why. And then counter hit down four. Elisa doesn't really have counter hit moves. Like the one move that really works is back one and then the down four for the low. But it really is... Um, pretty good and pretty important. Even though it is launch punishable, all of your lows are launch punishable. You kind of have to use it. And I am uh, noticing lately just how much mileage I get uh, specifically off of the uh, counter hit launch on the down four. It's really important. Yeah, so the reason I included this match is uh, Lisa has a new move this season. Um, that move right there. And I wanted to find a way of using it. So I tried this out right there. And it worked, so I did it right away again because I wanted to see if it really works. And it turns out it does. So basically what I'm doing here is I decided, okay, if I have a mid-extension uh, that they have to respect, because it's a pretty chunky counter hit uh, mid, um, after the Moon Glide 1, maybe I can use that to make them hesitate and lock them down, and then I can perform a, a down 3, get the clean hit, and cancel that into DP2, and it turns out that works. Uh, there's a little bit of execution to it, because you have to do um, down 3 DP2 from, uh, you know, a standstill, which is something that is important to practice with this character. Nice little conversion here, got a counter hit on the second end of back 2-3. Uh, 
Um, but if you can get it to work, I think it can be really dangerous. It's a pretty good setup tool specifically for the down three. Now the opponent does have enough time, I'm pretty sure, to um, do a little backdash in between and actually nullify the clean hit properties of down three, which is like the bane of Elisa's existence and the reason she's uh, been bad for so long. She can't get that clean hit. Um, but I've tried this setup maybe... Um, seven or eight times at these you know not very high ranks but not very low ranks you know decent players at least and uh, i think i've only had it neutralized by somebody uh, back dashing once um out of all of those tries so i think it's a pretty solid setup and something that i'm going to be experimenting with more um that running move from lee right there you just have to step uh, it's crazy to me how lee players really love to use it even though it is so extremely easy to step it's telegraphed it's obvious and um i don't know they just keep using it i guess the plus frames are just so attractive because lee works really well with plus frames he has great counter hits and and strings that you know are natural when he can get a uh, counter hit so um, but if you are a lead player, I would recommend not using that gap closer all that much. I think you have better options. And for the most part, hanging back and doing that. Is it back four? You know, that counter hit um, overhead kick with a crazy range. Maybe that's a better option than, you know, running in. And here you can see I did the exact same setup that I was playing with in the previous match, which is why I wanted to show this match, because now I decided to take it one step further and actually accumulate two bars um, to see if I could uh, turn that into a super. And it actually worked really well. Now, I spent two bars dealing just a tiny bit of damage to take that round right there, but I am actually very happy with that bar economy thing about Elisa is that your moves are generally really bad and it's not easy to find damage with her and if you can take a round a whole round and just put that in the bag and have it be done with then I would spend um, double meter on that uh, easy even if it's just an issue of dealing um, you know an extra point of damage because uh, it's a character that's kind of easy to come back on because she can't brawl you know no pokes and stuff like that That's the counter hit move from Lee that I was talking about earlier. It's so fantastic. Uh, crazy range. Here you can see for the follow-up after my um, counter hit down four, I'm using while standing to as opposed to, and here's another super cancel. So four attempts in a row, it's worked beautifully, and I've, you know, um, added the super on, and it works well. So it's a setup tool that I'm going to bring with me in the future. I decided to get a little bit cute and try the other new thing that Elisa can do in this season, which is 4 forward 1 plus 2 cancel with a down into a while standing move. Uh, unsurprisingly, that didn't work. Now, this Negan player right here is by far the uh, best Tekken player uh, that I played in the last few days. Uh, this was like the most dangerous uh, match that I have for you in this compilation, I think. I think he was really solid. Um, and it was a good match and I played him like after this I got on a crazy win streak you can tell I'm already at eight wins and I got uh, quite a bit higher than that but the guy who finally ended the streak and uh, messed me up was this guy I, I ran into him again on the uh, cathedral stage and I lost that pretty bad so he's a very good player and you can tell he's already taken the first round um, and I hate when that happens right when you're converting to the wall when the actual wall splat happens, it kind of sucks the opponent into the wall for a little bit, if you know what I mean. And that can really uh, mess up your wall combos. And Elisa is super susceptible to this. She has almost no consistency at the wall whatsoever. Her conversions are kind of bad. And if there's any kind of angle, everything just falls apart. So more and more, when I'm um, noticing that my combo isn't going to work, I just drop everything and jump back because otherwise I just get launched when they wake up. Now at the end of that last round, the one that just ended, um, if you want to go back and look at it, you can tell another big nerf that Elisa received uh, this season and you can tell right there that it actually really mattered because I got a, a counter hit down jab that I cancelled into a dive kick four and that was an, and he baits out the EXDP, beautiful, uh, definitely intentional. So uh, as you can tell, he knows... Uh, what he's doing doesn't break the throw though uh, but like I was saying that uh, 
down jab into the dive kick four would have been natural and that would have killed in the previous season and in this season it doesn't because that's not natural anymore and so i had to come down with the dive kick um, I got the plus frames for having him block that kick and then I did a mix-up and I caught him with the fish hook But that mix-up could have been unsuccessful and he could easily have turned that uh, round around So you can tell that that nerf is pretty big for Eliza. Here I catch his um, big armor move with a down four And it's a really good tool specifically for that with Eliza uh, Block punish on the down four two and then I get a counter hit uh, thanks to the crush properties of back one two. What a fantastic move for this character. And a uh, down forward one for the Oki. So now we're tied up. Can't say I was confident at this point though. And that's the um, guaranteed EX dive kick after the... Um, Moonglide 4, and as you can tell right there, I used to always do the instant version of the EX Dive Kick because it, uh, well, first of all, I thought that was the only way to actually get it. Um, and then it turns out you can do a normal EX Dive Kick without instanting it and still have it work just fine. Um, I didn't really want to do that because it felt like I was just going to a less advanced option, but here I was kind of tired and didn't really want to lose. So uh, sometimes now I just do the simpler version and you actually get the same damage as well. It might not look like it when you look at the damage uh, meter, but that is just because the combo counter resets. But if you add the damage up, it's the same damage for uh, both options. So I managed to uh, win against that guy, but great player and great match. And like I said, he messed me up later in the day. Um, Moonglide 4. And that's another running move, very similar to the Lee situation that Chloe players just really like to abuse a lot. And it's very, very easy to step and really quite telegraphed. So, I mean, I suppose it's good because you get plus frames and you can use it for Oki and stuff. But it just seems so uh, susceptible to stepping that... Um, don't know what I did with the jump back there. There was obviously an execution mistake. I don't know why Chloe players are so keen to use it. So you can tell he showed me the back and uh, I didn't really do a lot to it. I could have gotten more damage, but I got a couple of ideas and he actually shows me the back uh, again later um, and I do something a little bit more creative. And that was totally my round, but I get caught by the double, the double uh, cartwheel hop kicks. And he clutches it out, which was uh, frustrating, but there you go. And here I keep ducking um, because for some reason I had in my head that, that down for three string from Chloe has a high extension. I think it has two extensions, but both are mid. Uh, so I kept hunting the high with a duck, even though it doesn't exist counter hit after the um, EX Moonglide 2 right there because it has pushback and then they really like to swing uh, to get back in after that so it's a perfect setup tool for that bloody claw see here he shows me the back again and I get a uh, down jab into a dive kick and then I do a throw on the back and I actually think that's a real combo right there and completely inescapable and if that's true then it's really good damage and something I'm going to try and do when I see the back more in the future because um, you might not know this but in Tekken a throw that happens on the back is completely unbreakable and you can do nothing about it it also deals a lot of extra damage um, compared to a normal throw so um, a large uh, chunk of damage on the back right there and I also got to see this very rare and cool uh, back throw from Elisa where she sucks a lot of blood and she actually afterwards wipes her mouth uh, off and stuff and we couldn't really see that part because of the uh, round ending and then unfortunately he does a telegraph low to try and steal that um, last round right there but I managed to see that in time um, despite the fact that I'm so very old um, and I low parry and take that Check this out, this Zafina player was another really good player and it kind of made me sad, I'll explain why later. Um, you could tell that I ran up and did a, a DP1 right there, which wasn't intentional, it was another execution mistake. I wanted to do down forward one, but because I dashed in and probably accidentally tapped down before uh, down forward, that dash forward made it turn into forward down down forward, which is, you know, 
uh, an electric input or a DP input, which gave me DP1 instead. <laughs> Stupid run, we're just jumping around in the air. Doesn't even look like Tekken, but there you go. Uh, but that gave me a DP instead. Now, look at this, this is beautiful. I played this guy a couple of times. He knows I like to do, <clears throat> excuse me, jump back into dive kick three at the beginning of the round. So he jumps back and uses the uh, landing to get a while standing to and whiff punish me beautifully. I managed to fight my way out of the corner here because I reacted in time to uh, down forward one four, which is a popular wall spotting option for Zafina. It was obviously going to show up, so I was kind of waiting for it, and I managed to see it in time. But I just wanted to say again how I thought that uh, round opener at the beginning of this round that he uh, chose was amazing. Um, it was obviously like intentional and planned, and it worked perfectly. And it's like I've seen one other player ever do that before. It was Armor King that time with a jump back into while standing move for a whiff punish at the, at the beginning of the round. But it just perfectly lines up with whiff punishing the um, jump kick uh, or uh, jump back dive kick three from Elisa. Unfortunately, now uh, my opponent decides that he doesn't want to keep on playing, um, which was sad. And I actually matched up against this guy, I think, you know, uh, it's like five times in a row, even though he didn't take the revenge match. And he, he did his best and kept playing, but eventually, uh, like the sixth time, I think he just got tired of it and um, plugged. Uh, it didn't even feel like a plug to me, because as you can tell, he was just on the floor for an entire round here before. I think he just turned off his console and went to do something else. And I thought that was so sad, because, you know, we've all, all been there, where we're so frustrated with a matchup, and we don't want to keep on playing, so we don't take the revenge match, but then the game just keeps matching us up with the same person over and over and over, and it probably feels really unfair. And I would honestly like it if there was some kind of option where, okay, if you've told the game... I don't want to revenge match this person. Maybe there could be at least, you know, um, the game guarantees that at least for the next match, you won't run into exactly the same person. Maybe there will be at least one other opponent in between uh, before you have uh, the possibility of running into the same person again. Um, maybe that's a terrible idea. Let me know what you think. But I just... Uh, you know, I could really feel that guy's pain, and Elisa is a character that a lot of people don't want to play against and don't enjoy the matchup with, so, you know, just a counter hit, um, dive kick three, but I dropped the combo. This was a really sloppy um, final game, you can see, uh, punish with a down jab right there instead of something meteor. I do see the snake edge, though, which was good. But again, I just included this game because it's the the Emperor promotion. So I thought, you know, I wanted to, to include it. Uh, we're going to go higher in future games, though. I kind of feel like I'm back on Elisa right now and enjoying it. So I didn't see that snake edge, though. I'm kind of just sad that he uh, kept doing them. <laughs> I'm always shocked when people choose to. Like, I don't use them. Uh, and if you do, I mean, that's completely your thing and, and, and completely fine. It just, um, for me, cheapens the feel of the match and makes it less enjoyable. It, it feels like, you know, uh, a little bit of a waste of time at that point. That's just how I feel about snake edges in general. You can see me just swatting at the air for no reason. Good duck, no whiff punish. No break on the one plus two after the dive kick. Classic Elisa setup. And for some reason, I don't do the X dive kick properly right there. I don't know why uh, or what happened. I must have been really tired at this point. It was the last game I played yesterday. He drops a combo. I block punish that though, so that's good. And that time I do the X dive kick, but then I drop the follow up. And the cheeky 4 forward 1 plus 2 for no reason to, to end the final round there. So I hope you enjoy this. I know my voice is a little bit gone. I probably sounded tired. That's because I am. I'm actually going to go to bed now and keep on recovering. But thank you so much for watching this. I'm feeling a lot better and I'm looking forward to really soon being back to, you know, making lots of videos and kind of getting back to my life. But uh, thank you so very much again. And I'll see you guys in the next video.